So Jay, how you doing today? I'm good. I, I am a little bit burnt out on comic book adaptations and superheroes. I know, they're all over the place. You yeah. got the Marvel films. Jay, Jay, you're burnt out on superheroes. I've got the perfect thing for you. Amazon Prime's new superhero show, The Boys. This show is the, the anti-Disney Marvel. I, I didn't know. It's the anti-comic book superhero in general. Yes, which I didn't know. I watched the series just kind of on a whim. I think I'd seen a trailer, like I think around Comic-Con. And I was like, oh, this looks vulgar. It just was lots of like swearing. I, was uh -huh. like, I don't know what this is. Um, so I didn't know while watching it that it was, I knew it was based on a comic book, but you told me it's based on a comic book by the guy who did Preacher. It's based on a comic book by, by Garth Ennis, who's been a comic book writer for a while now. And uh, he's a comic book writer who famously hates superheroes. And that shows. Every, every time a superhero shows up in a Garth Ennis comic book I've read, other other than the Punisher, who's more of a vigilante, they're always a boob. Like he's got this he's got this one Punisher storyline where the Hulk, uh, Wolverine, and Daredevil team up to try and take down the Punisher, and they're idiots. Okay. It's, the story is actually called Confederacy of Dunces. Oh, okay. Yeah. <laughs> now does he? Uh... Like, because the, the characters in this show, they're not boobs. Well, some of them are. But more than that, they're just really, really arrogant. I'm the world's greatest superhero. I can do whatever the fuck I want. It's kind of interesting because it's sort of, it feels like what Zack Snyder was trying to do with his Man of Steel movie. <laughs> except he foolishly tried to make, like, because, oh, in the real world, if super, superheroes were real, we would be scared of them and they would probably be like assholes and monsters they would also be real people too so they would do things for like money yeah so they'd be assholes and monsters <laughs> like real people are <laughs> uh, superheroes are real and and most of them are like have some deal with this the the, the void corporation yes this this giant corporation that that markets these superheroes and hey hey boston you want a superhero well we want 200 million dollars a year and you can have the supreme uh which made me think of uh kind of kind of like robocop a little bit in terms of it doesn't have the satire of robocop but no. the general kind of very dark, cynical humor of RoboCop. Well, similar to, to RoboCop in that, on the surface, you look at RoboCop, but he's a superhero. It's a superhero movie. Yeah. But really, the movie is about how evil fucking corporate America is. <laughs> yes, yeah. And the boys, you look at it, oh, this is a thing about superheroes? But really, what's going on the, the, the behind the scenes, the story is this corporation is fucking evil. Yeah. Which is, like, I, when was the comic book first published, do you know? <sighs> Because I was going to say, like, right off the bat, the first episode, it felt very current. I don't know how closely this adapts it, but I mean, in the first episode alone, you've got, it's, it's like a very Weinstein situation with the Deep, who is, the, the characters, they're called the Seven, that, yeah. that are kind of the head they're your, superheroes. They're your, uh, I, I'd say Avengers, but they're really more of a Justice League. They're, they're Justice League. You've got a Superman, you've got a uh, Wonder Woman, you got Aquaman. The Flash. The Flash, kind of a Batman. There's a character named Black Noir who yeah. has like nothing to do. <laughs> and I don't know if that, like, you could have played that up more for comedic value they don't really do that i don't know maybe he shows up more stories later on or something yeah yeah but uh i, I kind of like the idea that he's just sort of there <laughs> <laughs> every once in a while he's just sort of in the background of his scene i'm just you i'm just gonna <clears throat> but yeah like right off the bat the deep who's the aquaman character they have a new new girl that's being ushered in. Uh, what's her name? Her Starlight. Girl? Starlight. Any January. And she she's one of the few good people on the series. <laughs> Everybody else is a horrible monster. Well, there are there, yeah there are no heroes. Like yes. our, our superheroes definitely aren't heroes, but right. our main characters, our protagonists, the boys themselves, they're all deeply flawed. Yes. Yes. <laughs> Well, that's that's the thing is like it's the show is really about people trying to bring down superheroes. Yeah, that's and like that's how the, the fuck would you do that because they're superheroes. The the premise, if you don't know, is this like Carl Urban who is just great in everything. He's he, ever he's, done. he's wonderful in this. <laughs> he's a wonderful as, human being. As, as butcher. But he's just a, a a normal dude. He's not a superhero. He has no superhero powers and. He has been wronged by this universe's Superman, and he desperately wants revenge. Yes. And how does a normal schmuck 
just a normal schmuck like you and me yeah. get revenge on someone who is basically a god. Who is also a part of a, a like monolithic corporation. So it's, it's almost like you're trying to take down two things at once. Yeah. Which, which, which one is harder to take down? <laughs> um, but the, the Deep, the first episode, Starlight's kind of being ushered in as the new Seven. And he's like, uh, he's like, well, if you want to be a part of this organization, you know, you got to you gotta do some things for me. And just like immediately pulls his pants down. And I was like, oh, God, this is pretty fucking vile. <laughs> but then even it, it, the, the whole show goes so much darker than I would have expected because she does it. And then, like, the rest of the show is her kind of, like, dealing with that. I was like, oh, my God, what the fuck is this show? I know. <laughs> I know. That was great. Uh -huh. And it's horrible, but it's awesome. It's horrible, but it's like, okay, if we're going to talk about these issues, like, go all the way with it. And then the first, the, the kind of catalyst for our main character, who's named Huey, is his girlfriend is accidentally murdered by the Flash. He's called A-Train in this. Who, just because he runs so fast, just runs right through her. He disintegrates her. It's... It's one of those things for me, if, if you're a comic book fan, you, you think about what these characters, because they're so insanely powerful. It's like, you would be terrified of them. The Flash, yeah. who runs at near the speed of light, he would turn anybody into pulp if he just accidentally hit a pedestrian. Yeah. <laughs> and you could never do that with The Flash. Yeah. Well, and you shouldn't. And that's the thing when I mentioned Zack Snyder, like... Superman, not the appropriate vehicle to make a, a superheroes or, or evil monsters that could destroy us all if they wanted to. Yeah. Not the right venue for that. The most beloved superhero of all time. Yeah, don't make him an evil murderer. Yeah. <laughs> all you gotta do, you create this alternate universe, you have this character who's very much like Superman, but you can explore what would probably be the reality if Superman existed where everyone around him would be just a little bit afraid. Yeah. Well, that's the, that's the thing about the show, too, is, like, everybody is always on edge. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Even, like, uh, Elizabeth Shue is kind of the, the, the head of this company. She's the one that's sort of in charge of overlooking all these characters. And she's, like, constantly, like, you're never sure, like, is she a good guy or a bad guy? <laughs> she seems kind of afraid of Superman, but she also has a relationship with him. And it's, like, it, it feels like at any moment he could just get mad at her and, and disintegrate her. We are, all right, she has kind of a relationship with him, but I wasn't sure watching this if she was only having that relationship with him just to kind of placate him yeah. because she is secretly fucking terrified of him. Well, and that's where and the that's show... And that's kind of what we find out is the case. Yeah, that's as it goes along, it gets much darker. But I, like I said, it felt really contemporary in that, one, you have the kind of casting couch Weinstein situation with the deep and starlight. Um, but then also just the idea of, of people as brands, which is what this kind of deals with too. How it's like all these superheroes are like to the public, they don't know, like people idolize them and look up to them because they don't actually know them. Mm -hmm. Like like Huey's arc in this, I, I actually kind of like where he, he starts off, he wants revenge and then it just kind of falls off. It's like, what's the point of this? What am yeah. I getting out of this? Yeah. Is this doing any good? There's that There's that initial, like, yeah, uh, A-Train, a.k.a. The Flash, murdered my girlfriend. And he's a jerk. You want to see A-Train, who is the, their version of The Flash, get yeah. his. Well, and he's also a drug addict. <laughs> they have this, like, superhero drug. What's it called? A uh, Compound V. Compound V. And that kind of becomes... At first, I thought that was just like, oh, okay, he's a, he's a drug addict. That's funny. But then that gets explored more and becomes a much bigger issue. So just, yeah, the, the, all these things that they set up early on that end up having more kind of importance than I would have expected. Mm -hmm. Where I, at first, I thought it was like, oh, okay, this will be funny. It's like dark superheroes. But then it, it, it really goes places. Well, yeah, I mean, there's... Two faces of Garth Enos, the writer. Like, I don't know how I don't know how much they're sticking to what he did in the comics. I don't know. Hmm. But he's usually either a bit darker or just straight up dark comedy. Yeah. And I was when I saw the previews for this, I was expecting every episode to be some humorous way to kill a superhero. Yeah. The the trailer that I'd seen plays up the comedy more than I mean, there is some dark comedy on the show, but there's, there's also just plain darkness. There's plenty of comedy, but there's it's it's I wouldn't call this a comedy. There, there's a couple things, like there's a subplot at one point where the Deep uh, steals a dolphin, and that was a little too much for me. That was a little that was too, too much for you? It, as far as, like, the, the comedy goes, it was a okay. little too silly. It was so hysterical, I didn't care. <laughs> <laughs> it was... Well, you, you go from that, you go from one extreme, you get to, like, that deep scene with the dolphin. There's some, there's some stuff like that, it's really funny, but then you get, like, the exact polar opposite of that. The, the I don't know, if, how, how much do we want to spoil? The airplane scene.
It's uh, the setup is there's a, a plane that's been hijacked. So well, the, the the setup before that even is like one of the the running one of the running stories is this this mega corporation that's in control of the superheroes. They want uh, government army money. They're trying to get superheroes in the army. Yeah. And so they hear about this plane that's been hijacked, and the corporate the uh, Elizabeth Shue, she's like, hey, but if our superheroes stop that plane. They save all those people on that plane. It'll be look really good for us. Yeah. So hey, we're not supposed to do it, but you go save those people, Superman, Homelander, Homelander, and not Wonder Woman. But yeah, so they they go up to try and save the hijacking, and but it's it's not even about saving the people. It's about the PR. Well, stuff. it's about the image, which is what the whole show is, where it's like yeah, all the decisions they make on like who to save, when to save them. It's all like calculated and like cold and creepy because it, it, it's awful, and it's I mean it's it's a plane full. Of, people pleading for their lives in the face of these superheroes who they think are there to save them and protect them. But they're not there that's to save the, them. Because that's the image that not only we have of uh, like comic book characters in general, but the characters on the show too. It's not like this is a world where everybody knows that these people are assholes. Like, the, thing that, the thing that kicks you in the gut about that scene though is they could save some of them. Well, that's that's Wonder Woman is telling him, like, take these kids, and and he just flat out denies them. But the fact and he starts like yelling at him, like, get the fuck away from me! It's like <laughs> Jesus Christ. The, earlier in the scene, these people are like delighted to see them. It's like these are the heroes. Yeah. And now they're just gonna let them die, only because it would be bad PR <laughs> if it got out that they failed to save the plane. So yeah. they're just going to deliberately let everyone die. Yes. Yes. That's that's the the kind of RoboCop stuff to me, where it feels very much like the type of kind of corporate decisions it would make in yeah. in a RoboCop world. Like the way everybody like is is clawing at him. It reminds me of that shot in is it Batman v Superman, where there's all the people surrounding Superman and they're just like the the when the one weird like two second flashback they had to have. Just, yeah. Oh no, he's a hero. Oh yeah, Superman saves people. <laughs> but it reminded me of that. The way people are just like save us, save us, and then. Not only does he not, but he, like, yells at them and berates them for even asking him to save them. Well, he's, he's a complete fraud. I love the character of Homelander. Like, you get the the one episode where they're doing the real, superhero reality show. Okay. <laughs> and you, you don't know this at first because they're going through, like, oh, I grew up here. This is the farm I grew up on. And my, my father taught me baseball. And it's, then all, we, it's all a fraud. We learned it's all 100% lies because yeah. he was raised in a fucking laboratory. <laughs> But here's my image. I'm the wholesome all-American boy. Yeah. Like, I thought I was strong, you know, like made of steel, a fighter. And then I was faced with this horrible situation with this asshole. We have Huey, who's the human character, and he's sort of what kicks this whole thing into motion. And then you have her, uh, who's also a good person, but she's the superhero, and both of them kind of, like leading you as the audience into this world. Yeah. It's, it's like a great way to introduce all this stuff. Yeah. And they're good too. I don't know most of the actors on this show I'm not familiar with. I mean, there's like Elizabeth Shue and Simon Pegg, who I guess like the, the Huey character in the comic was based on him physically. I can't say this because I haven't read the comic, but I have heard that. And, and I was like, well, Simon Pegg's too old now. He's, he's obviously he, too old to play that character. He so. would have done that if they made this 10 years ago. Yeah. But. So casting him as that character's dad is kind of great. Yeah, and he's, and he's yeah. good on it. He does a good, he does a very uh, uh, acceptable American accent. <laughs> he's fine. He's great. Simon Pegg, you don't care. He's Simon Pegg. He's great. <laughs> well, the the I want to talk a little bit about. We don't have to go into details, but like the ending was jarring to me because I've gotten so used to short run TV shows or like uh, made for streaming shows that are basically mini series uh -huh. where it's they have a beginning a middle and an end and so by the time I got to the end of this I was like oh right it's the, the cliffhanger to the end of the TV season <laughs> it's I've, it's been so long since I've watched just like a normal TV show I forgot that they do that yeah, I was like we're, we're not gonna wrap up <laughs> cliffhangers are kind of a thing that have more in recent years they've they've been on the decline yeah well, i'm so used to i mean even something like stranger things like each season kind of wraps yeah. up but that's because each season is the same fucking story but things that are like every season of american horror story where it's like its own thing and so even though this is kind of the norm like a tv show not having a conclusion is jarring to me i wanted an ending <laughs> i did too because 
I don't know. I always worry with with things that like any TV series that's got like cliffhanger, cliffhanger. You always wonder that it will never get concluded properly because yeah. it'll 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 keep going on and on. And then you get to like the fifth season when the show loses its steam and everything just gets bad. And, yeah. and you you never have that good ah the end. Nobody moment. cares anymore. Yeah. Just end it. <laughs> so I mean, the nice thing is this is only it's it's easy to binge. It's eight episodes. They're like an hour each, so it's like a almost like a short movie. I don't know. I, I, I hope they get picked up for another season because where it leaves off, I was like, I want to see where. Oh. I I actually want to see where it goes. Unlike most shows, or I'm like just end it. I think this show's got enough buzz. Yeah. I th- I think this show's gonna go on. Well, that's good because I was worried about it like being too dark, or it might turn people off. Like, oh, it's a superhero thing, and then. In the first 30 seconds, someone gets obliterated by the Flash. <laughs> oh, my God. And then just the amount of children that get killed. Several kids die in this show. It's great. It's a real world. It's a dark, cynical world. And I think as a counterbalance to, yeah, all the... Because I'm, I'm done with Marvel, for at least for a while. I need a break. I thought I was done with superheroes in general. And then this show just hooked me back in. Because it's not really about superheroes. <laughs> Look at all these look at all these horrible monsters these superheroes are. <laughs> you you take note, uh, Zack Snyder. This is what you should have done. Yeah. Yeah, even if that was what he was going for with his Superman, like it was still a bad version of that story <laughs> just cuz he he kind of sucks. Uh so this is like yeah, this is this is kind of what I think Man of Steel was trying to do, just much much better. This is the best take on a scary Superman. Yeah, I haven't seen Brightburn, the James Gunn written movie that came out a few months ago. Oh, that, I... that, that was the idea is that it's like, yeah, Superman, except he's evil, basically. Okay. Like a little kid Superman, like when he first comes to Earth or whatever. But he's not even like, it's not like cartoonish evil. Like, like the comic books of every now and then they've done like, this is the evil version of Superman, but yeah. it's like, I'm going Superman, to take over America. Superman 3, right? Wasn't there an evil Superman oh, in yeah. that? Yeah. Yeah. No, this is, in our cold, horrifying world, if superheroes existed, like, they, they they would have egos, they would be monsters, the fame would get to their heads. And you would have a government that's afraid to take him on, because what do you do? Yeah. You can't put him in fucking jail! <laughs> well, I like that, too. The uh, At one point, they capture the invisible, what's his name? Uh, the, uh, uh, transparent? Transparent, or whatever. and Translucent. Translucent. They have him locked in a cage, and they're like, yeah, but he's invincible. Like, what the <laughs> fuck do we do? <laughs> we captured him, but now what? <laughs> and their solution, their idea is great. See, I'm not too shocked, because I'm just familiar with Garth Enos. <laughs> I'm, well, that I mean, they, I know they made a TV show, The Preacher, and like I've never heard a single person ever talk about or recommend that show. It's like it doesn't even exist. I'm assuming they didn't adapt it closely to the comic. I haven't watched Preacher. I love the comic books. Like the Preacher comic books are some of my favorite fucking things ever. Yeah. But I have avoided the show because I know that no corporation would ever have the balls to film that. What well, they did in the comic. That's the thing now, and that, I feel like that show is maybe a couple years too early because now you have, like, Netflix takes chances on certain things. Yeah. Uh, they have safe stuff too, of course, but uh, Amazon Prime with doing, like, the, the Nicholas Winding Ruffin show and then this. Like, there, there, there's all these different avenues. And Mike and I have talked about on Half in the Bag recently, like, how there's just, like, too much out there. But the benefit of that is that there's niche things that can be made and can be made... Uh, accurately to like the comic book or like just even if it's not based on a comic book just something that's gets really dark or really uncomfortable not like a a friday the 13th oh look at this shocking kill oh that's so dark yeah i mean there are shocking kills in this but they all mean something yeah they have some weight to them so watch the 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 boys watch the damn show (laughs) 